In this meta-analysis, we present data from several clinical trials that were conducted in the German CL study group over the last couple of years. Um, these are all frontline trials, um, phase two and phase three trials, comprising over 2,000 patients. And we analyzed the incidence and the outcomes of patients who develop Richter's transformation throughout um, the follow-up of these clinical trials. And we observed that 3% uh, of these patients um, developed Richter's transformation, so an aggressive lymphoma after having an indolent lymphoma beforehand, so the CLL. And uh, during this median observation time of 15, approximately 15 months, the patients, um, 103 of these patients developed Richter's transformation and we observed distinct characteristics of these patients. So we saw that patients um, who had deletion 17P were particularly at risk of developing Richter's transformation. Uh, we saw that um, patients who had B symptoms at initial diagnosis um, were also uh, uh, at risk of later developing Richter's transformation. So this was actually an independent prognostic factor in the multivariate analysis. Um, and um, we also did have some data on the different treatments that those patients received. So these were all follow-up data. So the data on, uh, on choice of treatment for Richter's transformation are not always very complete, but of approximately half of those patients we have data and we see that most of these patients um, were treated with CHOP-like regimens, so particularly R-CHOP um, uh, and for patients who develop Hodgkin's disease also ABVD and BCOP actually were, were um, treatments that were applied for these patients. We confirmed what was already observed in some other trials or in other observations that the outcome was extremely poor. So previous reports in uh, smaller studies um, have reported an, out, uh, an overall survival of between 6 to, to 12 months. Uh, in our analysis, actually, the patients had a median overall survival of just 8 months. So a very poor outcome considering that CLL usually um, has an improving outcome given the development of new treatments. Um, but we can see with this analysis that the improvements of, of care and, and the improvement of outcome of patients with CLL has actually surpassed the patients who develop Richter's transformation. So there is still a huge clinical need for improvement of treatments um, of these patients. We currently, the treat standard treatment of care for these patients is treating them like a de novo DLBCL. So as those patients usually have an aggressive lymphoma, we try to copy the treatments that we apply for patients with aggressive lymphoma without CLL. But as our analysis shows, um, this is not uh, enough at all. So the patients um, still die of rapidly progressing Richards transformations. And um, for us, this means developing new treatments of CARES. And we are actually at the moment um, running or preparing uh, to initiate the trial at the end of this year, where we try to combine those novel agents that have been established in aggressive lymphoma as well as in CLL and try to uh, administer th those in patients with previously untreated Richter's transformation. So in particular we have um, the RT1 trial in preparation. This is a trial where we will combine a PD-1 inhibitor together with a BTK inhibitor. So we will use the compound tislelizumab and zanubrutinib, so two novel and, and um, very eff eff effective um, compounds targeting PD-1 and BTK um, and try to, to administer them to patients with Richter's transformations um, and, and see how this goes, see how the response rates will be and whether we can, we can, um, we can achieve any treatment successes with these patients.